Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video, I'm going to go over some worked examples covering refraction and ray diagrams. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my other video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you'll be able to apply your knowledge of that to this video. So let's get going. The first example we'll cover looks at the definition of refraction. So it's a multiple choice question, and it says here, for a ray of light travelling from air into glass, which of the following statements is or are correct? So statement 1 says the speed of light always changes, statement 2 says the speed of light sometimes changes, statement 3 the direction of light always changes, and statement 4 the direction of light sometimes changes. Well the best way to tackle these questions is to go through each statement in turn and decide whether you think it's true or false. So the first one, the speed of light always changes. Well, that is true. Remember we said that light will always change speed when it goes from one material to another. The speed of light sometimes changes then cannot be true if number one is true. Number three, the direction of light always changes. So remember we said that we cannot define refraction as a change in direction because it doesn't always change direction. So that means that is not true. So that means that number four is true. The direction of light sometimes changes. So that is true. So that means that only one and four are correct, which is the answer D. So we're now going to try five worked examples where we practice working out angles of instance and angles of refraction and also drawing ray diagrams. Question 1 says a ray of light passes from the air into a rectangular glass block as shown below. So we've got letters P, Q, R and S and you'll notice we've got light coming into the block and changing direction. Then says for part A to find the angle of instance. Well we need to remember the definition of angle of instance. So remember the angle of instance is the angle between the normal and the instant ray. So in this case it's got to be Q. So I equals the angle between the normal and angle of instance which is Q. And for part B it says find the angle of refraction. Now remember the definition of angle of refraction was the angle between the refracted ray and the normal. So in this case it's got to be T. So we have that R is equal to the angle between the normal and angle of refraction which equals T. For question 2, a very similar question here, it says a ray of red light is instant on a rectangular glass block as shown below. So we've got this red light coming in and changing direction here in the glass and it says again to find the angle of instance and angle of refraction. So for part A, this time we're not using letters, we're using numbers so we might have to do a wee bit of working out. So for part A, the angle of instance, well remember the angle of instance is the angle between the instant ray and the normal so that's going to be this angle in here but we don't have that labelled right now so we're going to have to work it out. Well the way we can do it is we can have a look at this angle and this is going to be a 90 degree angle in here which the normal makes with the surface so that means that the angle left over here must be 90 minus 30. So I equals 90 minus 30 gives us an answer of 60 degrees. And for part B, the angle of refraction, well there's my refracted ray, there's my normal, so it's got to be this angle in here. So again we need to know that this is a right angle, so my leftover angle in here is going to be at 90 minus 55, which gives me 35 degrees. Question 3 says that a ray of monochromatic light passes through a semicircular glass block as shown below. So we've got this semicircular block, this time the light is coming from the glass block out into air and it's also changing direction again and it says to find the angle of instance and the angle of refraction. So for part A, the angle of instance, so there is my angle of instance in there between the normal and the instant ray, and that's 67 there, so again that's going to make an angle of 90 degrees, so this angle left over must be 90 minus 67 degrees, which is going to give us 23 degrees. And for part B, the angle of refraction, doing the same thing again, is going to be this angle in here, which is our angle of refraction, so we need to work out what 90 minus 50 is, which gives us 40 degrees. Question 4 is a bit different and this is going to give you practice of drawing ray diagrams. It says when looking down into the cam water behind the pier a student sees a fish. The student looks quite sad to be honest, he's looking down, he looks quite depressed, hopefully he's not about to jump into the water. But it says here complete the diagram to show the path of a ray of light from the fish to the student. Remember to include the normal in your diagram. Now these words over here, the fish to the student, these are important because that tells us where we're going to start our diagram. So we're drawing from the fish to the student, so it makes sense to start our rays over at the fish. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw our normal on near the fish at the surface between the air and water. So there's our normal, we're going to label that as normal. And the next thing we can do is we can draw 
a ray going from the water to the intersection between the normal and the surface. Now notice that we're dealing with two different materials here. We're dealing with air out here and we're dealing with water under here where the fish is. So you might already be thinking that we're going to see some sort of refraction going on. So the whole point of this example is we're trying to show that the student can see the fish. So if we start off with a ray just about in the middle of the fish here and it's coming in to touch the point at which the normal meets the surface of the water. Now what is then going to happen to our ray? Well, we've got water here and we've got air out here. So that means that our light is going to go from a more dense material to a less dense material. And you will hopefully remember that we said that when light goes from a more dense material to a less dense material, the ray actually bends away from the normal instead of towards it. So to show that it goes away from the normal, we need to draw it coming out this way rather than up this way towards the normal. So this would look like this. Now notice that I've drawn it going directly to the student's eyes because remember the student is viewing the fish. So we're trying to show what happens to the light rays going from the fish to the student. If you wanted to, you could then label your angle of instance and your angle of refraction. So there's my angle of instance there between the normal and the instant ray. And there's my angle of refraction between the normal and the refracted ray. Now that's us answered the question, but just out of interest, if we were to extend this line here going backwards, then we would see where the fish would actually appear to the student. And that is because of refraction. So the fish would actually appear here, but it's actually over here in reality. So if this guy was doing some spear fishing, it would probably be quite difficult for him to actually catch the fish because he would have to throw the spear somewhere in anticipation of where he thought the fish was going to move into because the fish would not be where he thought it was. Lastly, question five says that a ray of light strikes a triangular glass prism as shown below. So this time we've got air out here and we've got a glass here and we've got our ray going in, changing direction and changing direction again. It says to find the angle of instance and the angle of refraction. Well, part A is quite simple for us because you'll see the angle between the normal and the instant ray is 56 degrees. So that is my angle of instance. Part B says to find the angle of refraction. So there's my refracted ray and there is my normal. So that's going to be this angle in here that we're asked to find. And again, this is going to be a 90 degree angle in here. So we just need to subtract this angle from 90 and we're left with 39 degrees. That's all for this video, guys. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.